All right, there's some really specific settings uh, that you should be aware of in Pro Tools. These settings directly affect the performance that you're going to have. So we're going to cover those in this video. Let's do it. So what are the best settings for Pro Tools? You know, it really depends on what you're trying to do, how fast your computer is, and are you trying to record or mix? So here are the basic settings that should work most of the time. Now, in terms of my hardware, I'm using a Pro Tools HD native system, but still, these settings are pretty much the generic settings that should work across the board, no matter what your hardware is. So now I'm going to dig in and explain a few of these settings so you understand what they do and how you can customize the settings based on what you're trying to do. So starting at the top, the hardware buffer size. Now this actually determines how much data you want Pro Tools to buffer. The benefit is that it buffers the data in RAM, which makes it faster to transfer the data to the CPU compared to if it was on disk. Now, the CPU can process data quicker when it receives it in really small chunks. The catch is that it takes more CPU cycles or power. The lower the hardware buffer setting actually places much more processing load on your computer, but the direct benefit is that you'll have much less latency. Now, typically, that's what you want when you're tracking or even just playing MIDI. So when you're tracking, you should set this to 256 or lower. And you can try the lower settings, and honestly, it all depends on the speed of your computer, what it will handle. The lower the setting, the least amount of latency, but again, the more processing the computer is doing. Higher values are actually easier for the CPU to process, so you end up having more available power for things like plugins. But the downside is that you'll have much more latency. So you could use, say, 500 or higher when you're mixing, so you have access to the most amount of plugins. But again, that's not a good setting if you're trying to track. You definitely will hear more latency. Now, the next step is to choose how many processors are allocated to Pro Tools. And considering how much processing can go on in Pro Tools, it's usually best to assign as many processors as you can. But here's the trick. Always assign one less than your maximum number of processors in your computer. Okay, so the last processor then will actually be used by the computer. Pro Tools will have access to all of the other processors. So is that clear? So it's always best to assign one less than your maximum number. Now the CPU usage limit, uh, this actually just determines how Pro Tools will allocate um, CPU power towards RTAS plugins. Honestly, this is really an older setting for, for like single processor computers. Still, just to explain it, um, you can see I have mine set to 95%, which actually only leaves 5% for all other tasks like automation, uh, meters, even dealing with, you know, playing back MIDI. So the faster your computer, the higher you can get away with this setting. And, and, but if you notice like sluggish meters or scrolling, things like that, then you should probably bring the CPU usage down maybe 10 or 15 percent less than whatever you have it set to. But again, on faster dual core Intel computers, this should not be a problem as long as you leave at least one core available, as we said before. And that extra core is basically is there to deal with all of these tasks we're talking about. Um, this little checkbox, ignore errors during playback, uh, it does just what it says. It attempts to not stop playback to tell you that there is a problem um, usually related to the CPU usage. The catch is that instead of letting you know there's a problem, instead you just might start to hear clicks and pops in the audio. So if you hear clicks and pops, you probably should lower the CPU usage. Delay compensation is much too deep of a topic to get into on this video, and I'll deal with that in its own video later, but I tend to leave my setting on short. Now the final step is set in the DAE playback buffer size. As you can see, the default is 2, and I pretty much always use 2. In fact, the only reason to change this is if you are maybe playing back audio from a slow drive or trying to play back too many tracks from a single drive. Then you could try raising this to 4, but honestly, it would be best to just use a faster drive or allocate your tracks between a couple of drives if you're trying to play back you know, a whole lot of tracks. So that covers the Pro Tools playback engine settings. Uh, my name is Brian Carter. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know.